less observation time. And it's a question of how, how deeply and how far out we feel like we need to go. So there's obviously all of these trade-offs here. The one million second observation is sort of a typical one that, that for a Milky Way sized galaxy, we can easily get out to R500. And you know, for more massive ones, we'll do a lot less observation. We might need to have some deeper observations for less massive halos. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, there will be time for more questions later, and now we'll have uh, Akos Gopkan for from uh, CFA. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being here, and it is my absolutely great pleasure to give this talk uh, to all of you about LAM, about the line emission mapper and all the transformative science it can do. So Ralph made my life uh, very easy because I don't have to give a detailed introduction, but before I go, uh, I have to say that of course, it's not only my work. This was a team of 50 people who have worked uh, tirelessly over the past three or four months to actually uh, develop the science concept and all the science material that I'm trying to show here. Well, only part of the science I'm going to show here, but uh, still very exciting. So what is the CGM? So the circumgalactic medium, this is the gas which, which is residing outside the ISM, outside the stellar body of the galaxy and within the rear radius of the galaxy. Okay. This is a basic component of galaxy formation. So the existence of hot gas, gas halos around galaxies has been predicted more than 30 years ago. And we are here, still here and we are still trying to address this important question because we were not very successful until now. So the origin of the gas, so it, it is accreted from the intergalactic medium, medium. And of course, this gas feeds star formation. It, it feeds black hole growth. It's very, very crucial in the evolution of galaxies. What you see on this image is, a, is the hot gas distribution around the massive galaxy, which is experiencing uh, an AGN, out, out, uh, AGN outburst. So you see, please notice the scale of this image is 500 kiloparsecs. And you can see that the, this outflow is just filling the entire, well, or entire field of view. So this is a simulation from the illustrious TNG, right? And what we have observed so far is really this part. So we have been observing really the gas within the galaxy. So these, these images are to scale, okay? So we have been really, be, be, we have been kind of successfully mapping the hot gas at the scales of galaxies at 10, 20, 30 kiloparsec uh, uh, radii, but we couldn't map the gas here. This is what LAM is going to do. This is why LAM is going to be absolutely transformative. Of course, the hot gas, as I just illustrated, hot gas is, is dominant. So the X-ray phases of the hot gas dominate the overall mass budget, budget for galaxies more massive than the, for Milky Way type galaxies and all galaxies uh, more massive than the Milky Way. So what you see here is the oxygen ion distribution. And you see here that for Milky Way type galaxies, oxygen seven and oxygen eight are actually dominating. And this is what we are going to study, okay? Uh, so this is the warm gas, which can be mapped uh, uh, in UV. So basically by studying the X-ray properties of the CGM can reveal physics. This is how we understand galaxies. So we can solve galaxy formation. We can solve the crucial questions. So what are these crucial questions? I don't have time to go into, big uh, into too much detail, but these are like energetic feedback. So how the energetic feedback operates? Uh, uh, how is the outflow mass loading happening? How matter enrichment is happening from stars, from, from AGB stars, from type 1 supernova, from Cocora supernova. You can address all this. So over the entire baryon cycle, uh, you can try to, you can address this lab. Okay, now you might be wondering, this is so important. Why haven't we done this? Of course we have tried to do this. It's, it's not a surprise that we haven't tried to do this. I personally tried to do this. So I, I'm showing one of my earlier papers. Uh, this is a galaxy, and this is 6753 observed with Exelon Newton. This is a very, very massive galaxy. Don't get me wrong, this is not a Milky Way type galaxy. It's five times bigger than the Milky Way, okay, in terms of stellar mass. So, okay, if we could trace the CGM out to like 50, 60 kiloparsec radius, which corresponds to like 10, 15 percent or 15 percent of the real radius for this particular galaxy. But beyond this radius, Chandra and Exelon actually struggle to, to map the CGM. Okay, we are completely dominated by, uh, uh, by, by the Milky Way foreground emission as Ralph was mentioned. Of course, if we are constrained by the Milky Way foreground and we cannot detect gas, we are absolutely clueless about the temperature distribution, about the matter distribution of the galaxy. So we cannot do the real physics that we want to do in order to understand the most significant uh, component of the gas, the hot gas. And most crucially, the extended CGM, so beyond the stellar light, beyond really 10, 15, 20 kiloparsec of Milky Way type galaxies remains completely undetected 30 years after the original prediction by, uh, uh, by the White and Frank paper. 
you might tell me that, okay, let's build a bigger telescope, just like Chandra, just make it bigger and better because then it will solve our problems. Is it the solution? Unfortunately, no, it's not the solution. That's not how we can advance our knowledge. That's not going to be transformative the way plan build will be. So in order to illustrate this point, I'm having here a mock simulation of a telescope with 6,000 square centimeter collecting area and a two axis. So just to put this into perspective, 6,000 square centimeter, this is 10 times Chandra. Okay, so we have here something which is 10 times Chandra. We have here a super deep simulation of a TNG galaxy placed at Redshift point one, so roughly 40 megaparsec distance. You see all these point sources. Uh, we have two axis spatial resolution, so all these CXD sources. And look, there is the gas. This radius is, uh, uh, the radius of the circuit is 50 kiloparsec. So what you see is that we cannot trace the gas out to, you know, large radii as, as, as LAM would do. So this is a soft band image. So this is like a, a, a traditional soft band image as X-ray astronomers with Chandra and XM usually do. You might tell me, okay, you didn't do a proper analysis because I didn't remove point sources. You didn't do this and that. I did that. Okay. There it is. No point sources here. I feel their location. So I did what an X-ray astronomer would do with an image like that. Did the picture improve? Do we see the hot gas out to 200 kiloparsec radius? No, we don't. It's a little bit better, but still, the diffuse emission around this Milky Way type galaxy with a 10 times Chandra, so I would call it a super Chandra, you cannot detect it beyond 40 kiloparsecs. You are confined to 15% of the real radius. That's not enough. We want to do much better. So why is that? Raf already showed you a spectrum. I'm showing you a very similar spectrum. So again, the, the, the red line is the Milky Way foreground emission. And uh, the CXD background, the black is on top of that, we have the CGM emission from the galaxy. This spectrum looks pretty good, okay? But this is for the inner region of a galaxy, 13 to 39 kiloparsecs, so less than 15 kilo, uh, 15 percent of the real radius. So this is these green lines are all the uh, all the emission lines from the CGM. This is what you're interested. Okay, so we can detect this with a super Chandra kind of mission. But let's go outside. Let's go to the really interesting part of the galaxy. This is the same spectrum that Raph was showing. Now the Milky Way foreground lines are much, much stronger than the CGM lines associated with this outer region. So again, 80 to 160 kiloparsec region of this galaxy. Okay. So the issue with the CCD type of spectral resolution is that, for example, the oxygen seven line, you only get this. Okay. Try to differentiate the Milky Way foreground lines from this little line here. Are you going to be successful? No, you won't. This is why we need LAM. What is LAM going to do? LAM is going to do this. We can take a very narrow energy range around the foreground, around the, the, the CGM line, okay? Two EV, like a two EV uh, uh, wide image. And then we can make images there. We can just improve the signal to noise ratio enormously. Okay, where are the images? There you go, here is the image. This is an image which includes, this is the full mock image, so it includes the CXD emission, it includes the soft uh, uh, Milky Way foreground emission, but it's in a very narrow energy range, okay? Oxygen 7 forbidden line, one megasang observation of a Milky Way type galaxy. We can remove the point sources, of course, and I will show you that in a second, but, uh, sorry. And on this image, this is the same image again as Ralph was showing. So here we have the Milky Way type galaxy and you see the contours. So the extra emission extends well beyond the starlight of the galaxy. In fact, if you remove the point sources, uh, feel their location. So I just do the same analysis that, that an X-ray instrument would do, but on this very narrow band image on the oxygen sound forbidden line image. And you see, this is the scale, 100 kiloparsec. So we can detect the CG amount to 120, 150 kiloparsec uh, around Milky Way type galaxies. And we can, detail, we can uncover the detailed spatial structure. Okay, so we can do real physics here. Of course, you can do it in different energy ranges. You can do oxygen seven line, you can do at the oxygen eight line, you can do iron 17. And of course you see different structure. And you can, this is how you do physics. This is how you probe metal enrichment. This is how you measure temperature, okay? This is, this is the real important science okay, from these lines. So we can do surface brightness profiles because so far, so far I was showing you uh, a single galaxy, but we are, you know, I, I wanted to show you that I'm not cherry picking nice galaxies. Actually, we can map surface, but we can make surface brightness profiles. So these are simple as in the surface brightness profiles of Milky Way type galaxies. So the galaxies are placed at 0.01, typical R500 is roughly 180 kiloparsecs. 
that Milky Way type galaxies. You see that in carbon six, oxygen seven, forbidden line, oxygen eight, we can go out almost to the R500 radius of these galaxies. So we can go, we can map the Milky Way up to 110, 160 kiloparsec radii. For more massive galaxies, you can do the same thing, but you can trace the gas out to much, uh, to much larger radii, out to 200, 350 kiloparsecs. And then we are in a regime that I was telling you, I promised you that we can trace the gas out to like two, 300 kiloparsecs in terms of radius. So this would cover the entire uh, scale of that image I was showing you in the beginning. Of course, you can do much more than that. And now I'm just going through uh, the amazing, all the amazing stuff that you can do with lab. So you can map outflows you can so this is this in particular is a black hole driven outflow this is a velocity map you can measure velocities and thanks to the high resolution subarray that is in the uh, current mission design with 0.9 ev you can measure velocities you can map the black hole driven outflows you can map uh, supernova driven outflows you can map really the velocity structure in the inner parts of the galaxies inner parts i'm calling you i'm telling you 80 kiloparsec as the inner part so you might remember that we were struggling to even detect gas what land will do it will measure you velocities with 30 to 50 kilometer per second velocity accuracy okay and please note that these black hole outflows are a few hundred kilometers per second velocity. of course we will also measure uh, abundances we will, we will measure oxygen to iron ratios so we can find out how how the metal enrichment is happening. Uh, AGB stars, they, they, they uh, yield carbon and nitrogen. Corpolab supernova yields, provides oxygen. Typhon A supernova yields iron. You can differentiate all these metal enrichment processes from each other with lamp, but only with lamp because you absolutely need the spectral resolution. So there's a discussion that we could do, do also the all sky survey map. Uh, here is an all sky survey map. Okay, this is simulated TNG galaxy seen from the inside. Okay, and I'm just and, and then at the very end we'll talk about more about the Milky Way side, but you can study the Fermi bubbles and you can study black hole feedback with the best uh, spatial resolution possible in our own Milky Way. And look, this is the Erosita image. Okay, and this is the simulated galaxy image with the black hole feedback. And of course, Irina will tell you more. But we can do also absorption studies of the CGM. You can use all these point sources, which are CXB point sources, to study the gas in absorption beyond the R500. Okay, in absorption density, uh, the, the sensitivity goes with density, and with density squares in emission. So you have the CXB sources here, the gas, and some of it, uh, or some of the light at the right uh, wavelengths gets absorbed by the CGM, and then LAM will observe a little dip. Okay, oops, sorry. And then what you can see is, yeah, you can see a little dip. And of course, if you do it properly, you can get a beautiful absorption line, which comes absolutely for free. Okay, because you study the gas in emission, and then you get this beautiful absorption spectrum for free. And this is going to be absolutely complementary to emission lines. Uh, so I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much.